Hey guys, Scott here. Uh, today I want to talk about the MMR system in the game that apparently actually is an MMR system. This is something that the data miners were, they were scratching on it, but they weren't really sure of it. So it was never actually confirmed that DBD uses an MMR system. Um, and so I said, it's not actually an MMR system, but according to one of the uh, community managers, it actually is an MMR system. So an MMR system has to change uh, your rating dynamically based on the ratings of the players that you're going against. That's how every single MMR system works. So for example, in like StarCraft, if you're going against someone that has 6,000 MMR and you have 5,000, you will gain way more points if you win. Uh, and, you know, and then if that guy uh, that you were going against had 4,000, you would gain way less points and vice versa. If you lose and the guy has way more points than you, you don't get penalized that much. If you lose and they have way worse or lower points than you, you lose a shit ton of points. That's how an MMR system works. That's how every single one works. If it doesn't work like that, it's not an MMR system. And up until now, we didn't think it did work like that because every data miner always found that the max, no matter what they got, the max was always 20 points. And so we just assumed that that was going to be the max and, you know, it made sense. But clarification directly from a dev obviously is more accurate than data mining. So we're going to go with this. So uh, this is interesting because it means that it is an actual MMR system. But obviously it has a giant fundamental flaw that we'll get into that you guys already know. Um, so this is basically all the stuff I just explained. Um, and then there is an example here. So when you kill a better survivor, uh, you gain... This is just an example. If you kill a better survivor, you gain 20 points. And basically the way the game calculates this is it's four separate 1v1s, which is weird. Because like the 1v1 is all about the fun and the interaction. The 1v4 is all about the balance and the matchmaking. So it's interesting that they decided to go like this. I think that's not the best way to do it for in terms of like balance and matchmaking and stuff. That's you will look at the 1v1 for fun and uh, engagement, things like that, not for balance. 1v4 is the whole balancing section. So it's weird that they did it like this. But so you're you're kind of basically going to be uh, rated against each individual player you go against. So basically what, what all this means in a nutshell is you could technically have a game where you kill two survivors that were better than you and you will actually gain more MMR than if you killed three survivors that were just equal or worse than you. So you can actually tunnel the best players out of the match and be rewarded with more MMR than the other scenario where you actually kill even more players. Um, so that's kind of weird, but see, there's a fundamental glaring flaw here. And it's this part, kill a better survivor. The game still doesn't have a way of detecting what that is. In fact, that's why everyone's calling it escape-based matchmaking because that's all it takes into account is when you escape. Just because you escape, it does not mean that you are better. Now for killer, it's a lot simpler. Typically, if you get a 3K or a 4K or eight plus nine hooks, you know, something like that, it's a lot easier to determine and assign a static win to a killer because it's just based on simple numbers like that. It's a lot less complicated uh, than Survivor. Survivor, there's so much stuff that goes into whether or not you played well that match that it's nearly impossible for a, a system to automate that. You can do it. It would just take a monumental, ungodly amount of effort that it's unreasonable to ask for. And that's why the lead game designer, Patrick, said, you know, it, it takes too much nuance to make a system like that. So it's basically pointless, which kind of leads to the question, then why'd you do it to begin with if you knew it was going to be pointless? But the whole, the whole thing is, I actually wanted to look at like a theory I have because I've noticed the demographics that are kind of like happy with MMR it seems like most people are not happy with it but some people do like it the people that do like it are killers that want to sweat every match uh for whatever reason and then uh the other demographic I've noticed that is kind of happy with it is average survivors I've noticed they're actually actually pretty happy with it too and I, I tried to think about why that's the case and obviously this is all anecdotal so don't this is not like I don't have any data in front of me or anything I've just noticed this um but I've been thinking about it and it's because of the escape-based rating changes that I think this is the case. Because when you think about it, the better a survivor is, the better the player is, typically the less they actually care about escaping. Like, don't get me wrong, they do want to escape. Everyone wants to escape. But the god-tier survivor is the one that's going to want to use their time invested into the game and have that reflected in the actions that they take during the game which means they don't want to just sit on a gen for four minutes and just leave. That's If you ever watch the streamers, you know, play the game, that's their nightmare. I think they'd rather be tunneled and camped than just have to sit on a gen for four minutes and leave. So typically, the better a survivor player is, the less they're focused on winning. Again, it's still in the back of their mind. They still prefer to exit the match um, because that's, you know, the win. 
but they value doing shit that lets them reflect their skill in the match way more. That's why you'll see them intentionally take chases, go for crazy saves. They know the macro game of which gen the killer is going to go try to pop. Um, they're trying the actual things that reflect survivor skill. And you know, escaping is not as important to them. Whereas when you, you know, dip back a little bit in the uh, skill of the survivor, well, now they're kind of in the area where they're like, they're a bit intimidated by the killer and everything they need to do is just escape. Escaping is all that matters. So uh, it's end game collapse. That guy's on first hook and he just got hooked across the map. Uh, I'm just going to leave. And so now the game thinks that that survivor is way better than that guy on the hook who just ran the killer for five minutes and is an absolute god of the game. And that's the whole fundamental problem here is that if you have a system that dynamically adjusts the rating you get based on the better players, the, but the better players is determined by a faulty logic, well, the system doesn't work because there is no determining the better survivor. A human can identify that during the match, but a system cannot easily do that uh, at all unless you spend years working on every possible variable that goes into making a survivor good. Like I said, it's a lot more simple for killer. You can just assign nine hooks as a win, blah, 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 or, you know, Three kills is a win. It's a lot easier to just set a thing there. But with Survivor, it's so much more complicated that an automated system cannot possibly determine who's better. Because like I said, the better a Survivor is, typically the less they care about escaping. Because all they care about doing is making it so that their time that they invested in the game is not wasted. And their time is wasted if they just sit on a gen for four minutes and leave. They don't want to do that. Good Survivors, the best Survivors, do not want to do gens ever, actually. All they want to do is get chased and go for saves and things like that because that's the only thing that lets them show that they're actually good at the game because a monkey can sit on a generator and that's the whole issue so that is why i have that theory that the average survivor is actually loving mmr because they're actually starting to get teammates now that are dropping down they're actually really good at the game but they don't give a shit about escaping and so the game assumes that they're shit players and it's dropping them down more and so these average survivors are going oh man mmr is great i got literal comp players on my team this is awesome but because the comp players is going for sick flashlight CJ text and just like doing dumb shit the entire time to keep themselves entertained because they got 10,000 hours in the game and holding M1 on a gen is going to make them blow their brains out if they have to do it anymore. That's the fundamental problem. So this is technically a fun. This is a fundamentally correct MMR system. This is how MMR does work. But the values that better or worse are determined by are completely wrong. It's based on just escapes. That's why people are making fun of it, call of it uh, calling it escape based or based matchmaking because that's all it is. And that is the problem. So this system is good if it did determine who is actually a good survivor. If they did, then this is excellent. This is exactly how MMR systems are supposed to work. But because we know now that it's essentially just based on escapes and that is not a determining factor of whether or not you are good at all, it's basically as meaningless as the mass kill data that they give us. It just doesn't tell the story whatsoever. So that is the main problem. It's an MMR system based on data that has no basis in fact whatsoever. And I think that's basically it. Um, this is what we're going to have probably for the rest of the game now. So I think this is, I mean, I'm sure I'll make a couple more discussions on it, but it's good to know that it is an MMR system now, but we know how it works. We know it's based on escapes now. We know it's an actual MMR system. There's not too many unknowns about it anymore, and um, that's good. I think the transparency is good, but it also lets us know that it just doesn't work. It's not going to identify a good survivor. It could identify a good killer. It's not going to identify a good survivor, and that is, uh, I think, why there are so few actual high MMR survivors, and there are way more high MMR killers because of the whole 1v1 aspect of it. It just inherently favors the killer getting more MMR, and that's why killer queues are astronomical. So it's definitely flawed in a lot of reasons, but the main problem is determining who is a good survivor. That's really the only issue left with this system, but it's such a glaring, massive issue that it just breaks the whole thing. Um, but that is it, guys. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and I thought I'd share it, but thank you very much for watching. See ya.